now actually have declared a war on this uh, invading species. This is Norwegian fisherman's enemy number one. The pink salmon, or the so-called Russian salmon. Norwegians also know it as pukkellax. This summer, fishermen in the north of Norway catch them in huge numbers, but it is an invasive species for the local fauna. Originally from the rivers draining into the Pacific Ocean, millions of these fish were released into rivers on the Russian Kola Peninsula during the 1950s. In Russia now, it's a valuable resource. But pink salmon have invaded the mighty Norwegian rivers across the border, posing a threat to the native precious Atlantic salmon. The situation has boiled to the point that the Minister of Climate and Environment had to intervene. Most to stop this invasion. Uh, it, it comes uh, every second year in uh, large scale and uh, every second year there has been more. And this is not supposed to become a resource. It's, it's an invading species that we want to get rid of. Installing such traps is one way to control the invasion. I put on a waterproof suit in order to see the trap up close. Mind your step here. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, the fish come up through the river and then they are trapped in this trap right here. Uh, and this is where we filter out the unwanted salmon from the wanted salmon, which is the sea trout and the Atlantic salmon. Uh, as you can see, the bars adjust to the uh, depth of the uh, riverbank. That's what makes it so good. And the fish are sort of guided up here through these, through these banks. They, they give them some kind of leeway. And then they just naturally have to follow the bars. And then they're funneled into this co compartment here. So they're funneled through this one sluice and they end up in these two chambers. And in these chambers, we have a workable table. We can use a net to catch the fish that we see is unwanted. And then we kill it. and put it on land. You can say it's like a border control, yeah. Uh, they come to these two checkpoints and then we pick out the ones that don't have a passport. <laughs> the pink salmon doesn't have a passport because after spawning in the local rivers, it dies. Look at this one, huge. As a result, thousands of these rotting fish end up polluting the rivers. Furthermore, it also competes for resources with the Atlantic salmon, a species that's already considered endangered in Norway. While pink salmon is a tasty fish, and today's catch from the trap will be served for dinner, it's still an unwanted species and threatens one other important river inhabitant. Mussel in the river is a very healthy river. Quite, quite old, I guess, uh, ten year, more than 10 years than it died. Are these mussels now in danger? They are in danger. Why? They are in danger of many reasons. One of the things is the reduction of the fish populations of trout and Atlantic uh, salmon. Paul dives to prepare the ground for yet another pink salmon trap in the Yarford area. He collects some mussels from the riverbed so they are not broken by workers' boots. What, about a hundred. Uh, I, I think we certainly need to go up and put them out. But I will check a little bit more. Yeah, the, the climate change is connected to the pink salmon's success. So the water here in this river here is about one, one and a half degree warmer every 10th year during the last uh, 20 years. And uh, of course, one of the things that we are afraid of is that the water quality in periods in the autumn will be bad for the eggs of the Atlantic salmon when the pink salmon is rotting. That's why the next day we go to gather water samples. Paul and his assistant David are going to test the water at several locations along the river Grancy Jakobsel. The border between Russia and Norway follows right along the middle of the river. So this is the bacterias and we will make this uh, analysis of uh, the bacteria and the uh, nutrients in the season where the pink salmon we will sample every week to see how this is changing through the season 
until the frost is coming and the ice is putting the lid on the river. And then we will continue next year again to see how this is influenced with the rotting carcasses which is left during the winter and they continue to rot in the spring. We drive further on to a couple more sampling points. It's midnight, but it's still very bright outside. While most people are sleeping, the midnight sun of the Arctic provides us with opportunity to continue our hike to gather more water samples. We just took the water samples and now we're going to measure temperature so we have all the data that we need and we can connect back to the results from the lab. Ten degrees. Is it a lot? I think it's uh, what we kind of expected. Back at the trap. It's time for the native Atlantic salmon, recognizable by its distinctive dots, to be set free and enjoy Norway's rivers. Here we go, is free again to continue its way upstream. But the pink salmon shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> 